As you can tell, <laughs> this is not the van. But we are headed out somewhere fun, looking for some cool wildlife. The van is right over there in our camp. So let's go. This is going to be a fun day. This for me is a bucket list thing I always wanted to see in the wild. Hopefully we see it. Hopefully we'll see more on the journey, but cross we're, your fingers. We're going looking. All right, so we're down here at the port and Peru has a different kind of fishing boats down here. As we walk down here, it's pretty calm for the ocean. We're kind of in a little bay. There's a big national park, sort of a big peninsula out there. We check out all these boats. Looks like they do some seining and trawling, which means they basically, my guess is, and I don't know this, my guess is they drag nets with these boats, possibly do some long line fishing. Looks like net fishing though. You can see the malacon here. And uh, to be honest with you, this is a bit uh, nicer of a town than we've been used to, a little town. So we're pretty excited to explore this area. Looks like they have a nice market here and uh, possibly some nice restaurants. You know, one of the things I've been wanting to try along all these coasts and I just haven't found the right opportunity is ceviche. So hopefully we'll find something like that around here. So we're here and there is a group and there is a line which when we do general tours we try to do them by ourselves. That's definitely not the case no. today. So we'll be with a group. Hopefully we'll be in a position where we can get some nice shots for you, but I can tell you right now I'm super excited for what we got in store for you guys. Yeah. So we're here in the winter and over here you can see all the uh, tourist boats that go out on the two similar tours as us. And a lot of them are tarped up, so it feels kind of busy to us, especially <laughs> comparing it to other beaches we've been to here in Peru. And there's a lot of people in line, but there's a lot of boats over there that don't look like they're going out today, so. I bet this place is busy during their summertime. I think so. So we're in Paracas Bay, and that's the reason why it's so smooth. But there's an isthmus out here to this giant peninsula, and the peninsula is a national park and so i'm going to give you guys a hint we're going to explore that peninsula that national park and there's some pretty unique spots out there so we're excited for that but right now we got some really cool wildlife spotting to do so cross your fingers guys
spotted penguins. <laughs> well, that was freaking amazing. We saw dolphins, sea lions, penguins, Inca terns, all kinds of birds. Now we're gonna walk through this little town a little bit. Maybe Kurt will try some ceviche. So here we are right here in Paracas. And this is the big bay of Paracas where we just went out. And over here is the big port. We drove past the big ship out to the candelabra. We saw all sorts of birds around here. And then we shot out to the Islas Belestas. And that's where we saw the penguins, the sea lions, and a bunch of other really cool birds. What an amazing day out there. But that's where we're at. You ready to find something to eat, Curdy? Let's go, I'm hungry. All right, everyone. I have got some ceviche here. And they brought me a bowl. This is fish. Looks like there's some potatoes. I don't, this looks like a sweet potato. Really excited to try the ceviche. So this looks like a piece of fish. Delicioso. <laughs> I'm a happy man. Let's see what else I have in here besides fish. This looks like some kind of That was a bit chewy, so more like maybe like octopus, octopus or something. It's good. Try one of the fried pieces. Mm, I'm gonna stick with the ceviche. <laughs> okay. Pretty good. Kurt likes the ceviche. And for me, stir fried chicken. If you're new to the channel, I don't like fish. <laughs> My ceviche is almost gone. It's delicious. And the fried fish and poppins, it's just too much food, guys. This is so much food, I can't eat it all. I won't be able to eat all this either. We'll be taking some home. All right, this is our campsite we found here. About a half a mile outside of the beach town of Paracas. It is, without a doubt, my favorite campsite so far in Peru. And I think it may even make the top five campsites of the whole journey so far. It's got such a cool vibe. It's uh, the, the owners are very friendly. It actually has three showers with hot water and good pressure, which is really nice. These are the showers here. The third one's not decorated so nicely. It's just an overflow if there's too many people, but it is manicured well. It has that nice lookout deck up there, which I'll tell you a little bit more what that's used for in a minute. It has several hostel rooms. It's got a little living room here with a TV, a dining room table, a pool, but it's wintertime here. A little too cold to get in the pool, for me anyway, but we're in the middle of the desert. I can imagine in the summertime that thing gets a lot of use. We got the fun foosball, a little bar area, lots of plugins, good internet, just a really nice place. We've enjoyed our few days here. And uh, in the morning, we will be pulling out. And we'll be going right out here to explore the beautiful beaches of this national park. The other day, we took our boat ride out of here and went up to those islands to see the penguins and the other birds. Our camp is probably about right here. But it has been a true joy to stay here. Two more bathrooms over here, incredibly clean. Just a good place, guys. But if you check on iOverlander, there is a WhatsApp number. And there's only room for one, maybe two vans, depending on how big. So call ahead. Uh, and that's the tour of our favorite camp so far in Peru. But now I'm going to take you up these stairs. Oh, there's also a kitchen, guys, that you can use. We don't need the kitchen, so. But it's a nicely equipped kitchen. There is a kitty cat. A hostile kitty. Hello. Pretty kitty. He's not so friendly because he knows 
that we're the ones that brought G Money and Vanna here. Just kidding, he's a great little kitty. There's also a little dog. Hello, this is our friend who's made this place so wonderful. And then tonight, maybe, we get an epic sunset from right over there. So if you're coming to this part of Peru, this is where you want to stay. Tons of fun. So we've walked across the road from our campsite. We're going out to where sometimes you can get a really nice sunset. Jose, a friend of the guy that runs the camp, is walking us to what they call the perfect sunset watching spot. And the little dog Aki is going with us. So we also just found out when Kurt spotted a hole about as big around as a one liter bottle, coke bottle maybe, that they have owls here that live in the ground, little ones that come out at night. So we won't get to see them. But I kind of wish we'd have known they were here. If we see another hole, we'll show you. So we've walked about a half a mile out into this salt field to watch the sunset, and it is about halfway set. And it's really pretty. I'm curious to see if the sky doesn't pop some more colors once it sets all the way. What do you think, Kurt? I think it's gonna blow up. I think we're gonna get some bright oranges and reds tonight. We can set up nice. Just gotta wait a few more minutes. <laughs> Whoa! One last look across the desert sky and we can hear the night birds coming out screeching. See y'all in the morning. Good morning. We just left our very comfortable camp down here close to the little town of Paracas. But before we leave this area, we are gonna take you guys out to see the Paracas Peninsula, which is actually a national park here in Peru. It's supposed to have some beautiful beaches gonna go ride through and take a look at them before we head to our next destination. So to get in this national park it was 22 soles which is probably give or take a dollar around five dollars for both of us and uh, it's got nice paved roads that you just drive from beach to beach. Now there's a lot of this peninsula that you can't get to because it's just being protected and preserved but it should be a nice drive today with a few nice stops. We are not more than a thousand feet into the national park and right over there, flamingos. Now we can't walk any closer than here. Kurt's gonna try to get a little footage from the road, but right away, flamingos. It's cool, right, Curtie? Really cool. You know we're in a sandy desert, but you can see the way the ocean has just carved away the beaches and you have some sheer cliffs. It's pretty magnificent. And then off in the distance, there's a little haze, but you can see some islands. And we know from our boat tour that those are generally loaded up with cool seabirds and sea lions and other sea life. So yeah, we're coming up to our first beach in the national park.
The first beach we decided to stop and walk down to does not disappoint. What's even more exciting is the morning haze is burning off and I think we're gonna have beautiful blue skies, lots of pretty birds, the smell of the salt and the crashing sound of the waves. What a peaceful place this is. We see the sun in the sky, we feel it all unfolding, into the morning we'll take flight, it doesn't matter where we're going, this time is ours, and this is where absolutely sit right here on this beach all day long but this national park has too many beaches we've got to go see some more of them let's go to beach number two all right if you look closely at this rock there's like all these little layers and i was thinking that maybe it might be the salt that kind of just settled over time but the sign up front says it's organic material and they say if you look closely, you'll see signs of other organic material, like maybe it was a forest or something. I think we've mentioned it several times, but Peru is just a very long country. With the Andean mountains and some of the other windy roads, it makes for some really long driving days. And we only have three months in this beautiful country. So the reality is we haven't spent much time on the beaches here, but I'll tell you what, I sure have enjoyed it. And I actually think this spot right here, this national park is going to be the last time we see the beaches of Peru. This place is much bigger than it looks on the map. Jackson kind of asked. See, this is a little fishing bay here. And of course, wherever there's a fishing bay, there's lots of little restaurants. It's really touristy, but it's also really beautiful. And very windy. 
So I'm walking through this little restaurant touristic area and there's a couple pelicans up here. Looks like they made friends with the chefs. <laughs> I walked up and they were kind of coming out of the kitchen. I don't think I was supposed to see it, but here they are right here. <laughs> Looking for some more food. There's a little cat along there too. These guys are definitely getting a little hometown loving. So the penguins we saw yesterday on the boat ride are called Humboldt penguins. And they're fairly small penguins as penguins goes, but I was wondering why they call them Humboldt penguins. It turns out that up through here, Peru, up through this area, there's a current called the Humboldt Current. And it's said to be, it's a cold water current, and it's said to be the most productive current for plankton and other species of marine life, which supports obviously all these board, uh, birds, seals, and everything else, or sea lions and everything else that comes along here. But what a stunning contrast of the ocean and the desert. This is the sort of infamous red beach, red sand beach. And we've seen some pictures and it's gorgeous. But today, obviously it's overrun with seaweed. And you can see these guys down here. They're not necessarily cleaning up the beach, although that is a side effect. They use this seaweed here, and we saw them in another area harvesting it as well. But it is used for the phytochemicals inside of it to make perfumes and cosmetics. And so I know if you're thinking you see beautiful marketing and commercials for all your cosmetics filled with seaweed, well, this is actually what it looks like. <laughs> So if you look at this stuff along here, it looks like rock, but it's like mushy like clay. Very interesting. Onward and upward. Another thing we've learned is there's a lot of tourists here and we've learned that they can take a day trip from Lima. They come down here, they go out and they do the boat ride we did, and they ride through these beaches. They also take them another couple hours down the road to our next destination, which I'm not giving away yet. But it's like a 15 hour day tour and they rush them through this. Sure glad we have our van and we get to enjoy it at our own pace. I know Kurt told you about the red beach already, but we found a, a mirror door where we can look down on it. So here's another view of it. You may also notice I'm skipping a couple of these beaches. I pulled an old lady move and have tweaked my back. So walking with walking right now is kind of a pain in the butt or a pain in the back. So this site is called the cathedral. I guess one of these rocks is supposed to look a bit like a church. This will be our last beach stop. Unless, of course, we take another go at getting a little closer to the flamingos on our way out. But first, let's go see this big rock formation. All right, so this rock formation is somewhere between 28 and 40 million years old. It is the symbol of the Paracas National Park. And it's been over thousands of years taking a beating from the waves and this strong Paracas wind. Now, unfortunately, in the big earthquake of 2007, it got extremely damaged and its shape changed dramatically, which is kind of sad. So there's what it would look like before the earthquake. And here it is after. The winds out here where the desert meets the ocean, the whole time we've been anywhere where the desert meets the ocean, the winds are insane. Very, very windy. It's also winter time, which makes it cold. But soon we're gonna leave this beautiful national park and head on to our next destination, 
but I do think we're going to take one more try getting a little closer. There's pretty pink flamingos on our way out. So let's go do that. All right, this is the last stop for our little tour through this national park. And you can probably see it's a long walk out here, kind of. But anyway, this is where the flamingos are. We saw them on the way in, but they were so far away, you just couldn't get a good picture of them. So I'm gonna come down here. Snow looked at them through the binoculars and said they were kind of unique, almost striated. Uh, strikes. Anyway, pink and white. <laughs> so we're gonna come down here and see if we can't get you guys some good luck at these flamingos. Well, we hope you enjoyed that ride through that beautiful beach national park as much as we did. It is with some very windy, precarious drone footage. Take the second left. Good job, Curdy. Now we're gonna pull into this little town of Paracas, fuel up the van, and head to our next destination, which you're gonna have to wait to see what that is because we're gonna end the video right here. 200 meters. Cheers, left. guys. Cheers. We're turning left in 200 meters. Cheers, guys. See you in a few days. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you guys know when we put out new videos. And don't forget, you can always follow us over on Instagram to see what's going on in between videos. Cheers, guys!